Welcome to the Greenway Outdoors podcast, your trusted source for outdoor information and entertainment. The Greenway Outdoors is also an internationally syndicated TV show and conservation advocate aimed at bringing millennials and Generation Z into the outdoors. Welcome to the Greenway Outdoors. The Greenway Outdoors is brought to you by Ram Trucks, built to serve Motor Trends Truck of the Year for the third year in a row, and by Bass Pro Shop and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. Tracker Boats, fish the finest, and by these other fine sponsors. Hello and welcome to episode 80 of the Greenway Outdoors podcast. My name is Kyle. I'm AJ. I'm Jeff. I'm Ryan. And we are your favorite outdoor podcast. We talk about current events, topics, everything that's going on in the world, but from a um, outdoorsy type <laughs> ish perspective. What? You just call us outdoorsy types? <laughs> <laughs> I'm outdoorsy type. I don't know. Is that how you say it? I don't know what you're trying to say. Well, I'm just <laughs> trying to make people feel welcome at our podcast to you're know. You're probably offended someone. Well, what's sure. crazy is this whole conversation probably explained itself of what we're like. So, That's which true. one? Yeah. What you, you described it's it a already. good summary. Just yeah. chaotic. <clears throat> just no one knows what's going on, and that's pretty much how it works. What'd yeah. you do this weekend? <laughs> this weekend? Yeah. I went I went fishing with you a little bit. Otherwise, I didn't really do much. I forgot you were there. You were forgettable because um, I don't <laughs> think you caught anything good. We, we didn't do anything. We spent the whole time helping kids fish. Yeah. We took Lily out. Green's Guide Service. Who's Lily? Green's, yeah, Green's Guide Service was in full effect. <laughs> Who's Lily? My nine-year-old niece is Lily. So we took her ice fishing. This is her second or third time going. Um, dude, it was awesome. We're, so we're setting up the tip-ups. Those of you who don't know who, what tip-ups are. So when you a lot of people, when they think ice fishing, they think of you sitting in the middle of nowhere in an ice bucket, completely covered in snow, dying and hating life. But ice fishing is actually pretty fun. Especially people from the south, that's what they think. They're right. like, I, I couldn't sit You can that. walk on the water? Yeah. Lack like Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Jeff. Cultural appropriation much? No, to who? Christians? So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyhow. Uh, my, my people are southern. <laughs> my, so my, people. <laughs> my people? You ain't got my, no people. My Gam Gam grew up in Terre Haute, Indiana. That's south of here. <laughs> <laughs> Indiana? <laughs> you call her Gam Gam? She's from Gary, Indiana, too? Uh, no. No, ew. <laughs> <laughs> oh, our two viewers from Gary are now offended. <laughs> Ryan, your family's from New York, right? New York and, uh, well, Italy, in, in New Italy York. Guy. Yeah. You Italian. don't like pizza. Most of my family is uh, German, of German descent. Whoa. Have, any of, you taken, Whoa. have any of you taken... Have any of you taken... Well, <laughs> have any of you taken... The dog's here. Have any of you taken an ancestry report? Yeah. Have you? What did you? What, re, what did yours come back as? Um, uh, Italian. Did you have to do like on a spit? I yeah, hate, I hate spit. I, I don't. And now they've got you. Spit I don't know who's a particular bank. fan of it. I know it's like some people are like conspiracy theorists that they're oh like, my God. as That's if Phil. they don't already have my dad. I agree is with Phil. Way. Yeah. Then if Him something happens, they have your DNA to compare to. It's like you planning on murdering someone. <laughs> <What's>, it's <laughs> it's a lot deeper than that, Jeff. Yeah, Jeff. What, that, what, what? That's how they caught the Golden State Killer. What is the conspiracy? Do you theory know that he it? used to be a just, cop? Yeah. That's insane. So he knew how it all worked. You know. I don't know, and I'm not going to get into it, but the answers to reports uncovered quite a bit of stuff in my family, so <laughs> we learned some. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, okay. yeah, yeah. But why why won't you take one, AJ? Uh, I, it's just, I think it's a, a scam. Oh, like it's not real? It or, could be or, real, or but. Or that they're trying to. They're going to farm your data and sell it, and I ain't about it. Oh, what, everybody, what data? Everybody about? sells your data. Date of birth, ancestry, mm -hmm. um, name. It just is what it is now. Just yeah. another company that has it. I'm just yeah. not about it. I'm curious though, because I I don't care enough either. Well, after I did mine, my life really switched up for the worst. <laughs> 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 I don't know about you, but I get more phone calls from 800 numbers now. And uh, yeah. um, wh what was your report? What did it say? Um, I had I was 50% Italian, and then it breaks it down even further and tells me the different places in Italy that my lineage comes from, and then. Um, uh, a lot of Irish, and which is really funny, actually, because the Italians and Irish don't didn't used to get along too well. A couple well. of them did, am I right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, fifty percent Italian, some percentage of Irish, and then uh, English, and that's about the extent of what I am. Yeah. I know I'm a lot of German, and I 
know that my grandmother might have not, but on my mom's side might not have been completely truthful on my descent. So <laughs> I, I, I'd like to get one just to just to figure things out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Why not? Yeah, I, I'd get one. Would you get one, Jeff? I don't need one. Why? Because we've traced my family back. Back to, to Noah's Ark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my, my yeah his family was related to the my, monkeys on there. My, <laughs> <laughs> um, we, uh, we, one, it's like my great, great, great something uncle was an accuser in the Salem witch trial. Oh, he cool. was in that, really? Yeah. <laughs> an accuser? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Aren't you some sort of thing, A&E documentary special? Is in your family something? I don't think so. <laughs> what is what the what is it? What is the thing? The um, the, the help me. You know what I? You know the thing. The <laughs> thing you guys are you're like it's a woozy. <laughs> like the little secret society club thing you Skull are. Skull and bones. Oh, uh, Ma- Freemason. Isn't that you? Uh, my great great grandfather <laughs> was like a something in the Freemasonry, but no, that's him. See, did you he hide him. the not declaration? To, uh, <laughs> how, how high up was he? <laughs> he was a. Uh, it's like thirty three. How worried like were you when National below that? I think. How worried were you Whoa, when National Treasure came out? How what? When National Treasure came out, how worried were you? That's how. That's how you know how related you are. It's a. It's a fictional. Thing. <laughs> no, I, there's, I, there's no. It's like a funny thing. Like Nicholas Cage would do all that. Oh, there's something on the back of the Declaration of <laughs> Independence. There's not. It, it's. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, so this got a little off track. Back to Lily and ice fishing. So a lot of Jeez. people that think of ice fishing think of it as something that, like, you're just out there freezing and miserable and everything like that. But it's with the right equipment, you can make it a fun experience. Mm-hmm. The um, <clears throat> so we set tip ups, and tip ups are like a device. It's a disc device that goes over a hole, and it's got a uh, uh, basically a, a bail on it that allows a fish to take out line. So you set it down over the hole with a big minnow on it. When a fish comes and takes the bait and swims away with it, it allows it to spin and lets the fish take as much line as it wants. But when it spins, the flag goes up. Yeah. So you know a fish is on there. It's the equivalent of a fishing mousetrap, basically. Oh, okay. Except it doesn't smash them. Yeah. yeah. And lets them run away. But yeah, fishing I w- and and it does everything trap. opposite of a mousetrap. But we got it. Yeah, I don't know why you said that. That was the dumbest That's thing you said thus far. comparison you could probably make. What flags are? What exactly it is. No, it's, it's a mousetrap, mouse but if you were fishing with it, mm. a mousetrap smashes something. And you put Swiss cheese on mousetraps. Yeah, this Not is fish. Like, did you even think before you <laughs> said it? <laughs> like, when you said it, were you? Are you like, even real? Are you trying Go to ahead, confuse come people? up with an analogy? I I was just describing. He it described it perfectly. Detail. Come up with one. Thank you, Ryan. I'm glad I'm glad we can do this you together. Described it perfectly. It only took you two minutes to describe a very simple. It's a little fishing pole that when they take it, the flag goes up. Okay. That's all you had to say. So it swims away, and the little thing will spin on top as they're taking out wine. Kind of like, you know, a mouse trap when the mouse is <laughs> running away with the mouse trap. <laughs> um, had you ever used those mouse traps that had like the sticky ones? Those are dark. They don't die quick, and yeah. it's. Where it's like the dome where they go inside the. No, thing. no, 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 no. It's oh. just a pad of stickiness, oh, yeah. and they, they walk put their over foot it. down, and then they're like, oh, no, it's stuck. They try to pull, and then they use their other foot, and now their other foot's stuck, and then they're like, and then they use their face, and then their face gets stuck. So by the end, they're just laying there stuck. They starved to death uh, or something? Yeah. yeah, it's dark. I don't like those. I don't like those. I don't like them one bit. Which, which is crazy because they have... Um, well, I'll just use my tip-ups from now on. They have fishing <laughs> lures like that. Yeah. Well, where they come like, and swim by and they get stuck to it. <laughs> it's like the mouse traps. <laughs> yeah, just like the mouse traps. Idiot. Anyhow. Make one analogy <laughs> ever again. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. Uh, <laughs> so the uh, so the tip up sits over the hole. Fish swims away with it. Flag goes up, and you know it's there. So we, you're allowed three lines in the water per person. And um, in Michigan, in Michigan, yes. Um, shut up. <laughs> and then <laughs> yeah. So when we were setting up, I think we set up like five or six total tip ups, and then we were gonna jig inside the tent, uh, the shanty, and we just get them set up, and a flag goes off right away. It was on one of them. I used a great big minnow on it. I was like, ah, it's probably the minnow taking it. So Lily and I walk over there, and she brought the fishing poles out and managed to get them knotted up pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I'm, wor- I'm working on getting those undone, and I determined that the, the tip-up's not going to go off uh, again. It's not going to spin again. It's, it's probably just the minnow. So I go, I'll work on these, and you let me know if it starts spinning. She goes, uncle. I look up, and it is going berserk. I go, okay, ready? So I lift up the tip-up. And a lot of people have like different ideas on how you should set the hook on a tip up. And they're all And wrong. unfortunately everybody's <laughs> wrong except for Jeff and I. I our hookup ratios are 
I've heard most people say like 40, 50% is good. We're at 99. It's just the way we I do it. I was going to say more like somewhere between 80 and 90. That different. fits for you. <laughs> and uh, I was talking about myself there. Anyhow, um, so the uh, so what we'll do is we'll wait until that thing is spinning. A lot of people like lift it up, give them line, wait for tension. No, 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 no. So what we'll do is we'll just stand there until that thing starts spinning. When it's spinning, when it's spinning, you lift it up slowly and the other person grabs the line and yanks. Now, when you lift it up, you'll see the line going in one direction or the other, and that's because that's the way the fish swam. So you want to pull that opposite direction while they're swimming away with it because it's the only time you're 1,000% sure at least it's in their mouth in some way. Yeah. And uh, you, you yank by setting the hook. I set the hook on this thing, and uh, uh, or as the guy would say when we went to uh, New Orleans, pull the clothes on them. Um, and, uh, oh, yeah, I, pull the clothes on them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I go, what? Um, Ostrich. So I, I set the hook on it. And I'm like, that's that's a big weight at the other end of this thing. So I hand her the line, and she's great about it. She just starts going hand over fist and stuff, and she's, like, screaming and hollering and all excited. There's nothing better than a kid getting amped about catching a fish. Mm -hmm. She pull, she gets I, she starts getting into the hole, and I see a flash of the side of it. I go, oh, my goodness. So I go, all right, I'm going to help you lift it out because pike, what they'll do is when they get to the hole, they do, like, an alligator death roll. And a lot of times they'll wrap themselves up in the line – making the line either get pulled taut or uh, pulled in an opposite direction because it's wrapped around their head as opposed to just pulled straight to you. Mm -hmm. Long story short, when they do the flip around, a lot of times you can lose the fish. They'll pop the hook somehow. So I was like, I'll help you out the hole. She's like, I got it. I go, I'll help you out the hole. Because <laughs> also I don't even know if she can lift it. You know yeah. what I mean? So at the hole, we like get them out, and I look, and this thing's a tank. It is my the biggest northern pike I've ever been a part of catching. It's 36 inches long. And just shy of 14 pounds. Nice. So it was a behemoth healthy. You're looking at a picture of it right now. In an inland lake in Michigan. That's yeah. like unheard of. A small inland lake in Michigan. Yeah. Canada, they get that. Very small lake. Yeah. yeah. In Canada, they get that big all the time. It's, yeah. it's actually it's so small that it's a, it, it's a facility for the DNR where they breed pike. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's a little <laughs> reservoir. Yeah. It's not, it's not true. Um, it's about 20 square feet. Yeah, <laughs> it's the Mike D. Stewart Memorial. Uh, <laughs> this is a normal lake, um, it, but uh, uh, but yeah, the um, pulling that up and seeing her face and her smile and jumping up and down, it was just it was a cool memory because she was amped. Mm -hmm. um, we got the picture in it, and I, I got a couple of them. I'm holding it like this out in front of us, and her little head compared to the fish, and her big old smile. I go, you want to hold it? She goes, no, I don't think so. <laughs> she goes, I'll get it. I'll get it's it. Probably a good oh, choice. It's gross. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I and mean, then I uh, pike um, suck to hold, anyways. But yeah, they got that stank on them. Yeah. Slime. Pike have a certain smell to them, don't they? Yeah. It's it's like very irony. It's from the slime. Yeah. What? Well, yeah. Slime time. It's like it's not a normal fish smell. No. It's like a mixture of Jeffrey and Stop like it. hot sauce. <laughs> hot sauce. And hot sauce. <laughs> There's your get him. Get him. Yeah, get me. There's my analogy. There's, there's his what? analogy. Too bad it was too accurate. You can't even it's pick not, on it. It's not there's nothing Jeff, to Jeff does there. not smell spicy. He only looks spicy. Touche. What team are you on today? Pick one. I'm on either or. I'll go back to AJ. <laughs> Whatever suits me at the moment. <laughs> your hair looks very nice today, right? Thank you. Don't. It's don't. like we're friends. He got it cut today. <laughs> the guy did. that cut your hair. He he watched the show. He said, "Right." Yeah, yeah. He liked it. He was fascinated by the the underwater shots we got of the sakai. Nice. And then I told him our movie magic. Yeah. Nice. Don't reveal those secrets. Yeah. No. It's uh, it's magic. It's humbling. Yeah. When you, exactly. When you, yeah. That's what it is. But yeah. So seeing her, we also then we went in and did uh um some jigging the rest of the day, um and uh, we caught a few p different panfish and stuff. Mm -hmm. And she got she didn't really enjoy the panfish part much. She got, was pumped about catching them at first, but then when she was catching them all the time, then she like, we were at the gas station. I go to her, I go, you can get whatever you want. And uh, she goes, okay. She goes, boom, boom, boom. I go, whoa, 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 three is enough. She buy, gets three things of candy. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, mm -hmm. when I said you can get whatever you want, I meant like one thing. But then when she had the three, I'm not going to tell her no. So then I was could. like, yeah, I know I could, but I don't, <laughs> I don't really make a habit out of telling her no. She so, ate all three <laughs> of them things. <laughs> she and she was. They were all ready me. And, to go. They were all me and AJ candy. <laughs> they were like uh, um, gummy, little sour rope things. The sour mm. rope things and sour gummies sweet and stuff. Yeah, sweet sweethearts. Oh, yeah. I was yeah. never a chocolate person as a kid. I was more that sort of thing. Mm. Well, let's look stuff. at where you were raised. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> trash. You're trash. <laughs> <laughs> you grew up across the street from What's me. What's your area? Code? Your mom bought me most of my candy. <laughs> 
Okay. So what's your point? Yeah. <laughs> I'm still, we're all, I'm we're still all working trash. my we're way through trash. that Pez that you gave me. Yeah. My <laughs> half five gallon bucket of Pez <laughs> gifted from Jeff. Yeah. We're friends. Good gift. We do nice oh, I, I thought that I thought that was public knowledge. Yeah. Are you guys messing with me? No, no. for real. <laughs> you give me a crap load of Pez. Yeah. Cotton candy flavor. Mmm. That was the last thing your mama gave you before mm-hmm. she passed away. Yeah, I, I don't really eat Pez. So yeah, but I... you gave me two little sleeves of it. Ha <laughs> ha! Yes! Yeah, you're welcome. Where is it? You're welcome. I'm not telling you. You don't even eat it. Yes, I do. No, you don't. You just said he ate a whole bunch of it. I bought you a yellow Red Bull on your birthday, and you still haven't drank that yet. That's because it's a gift. What's your birthday? Why would what you, you mean, compare those two things? I just want to... Did you just compare yellow Red Bull to cotton candy It was a Pez? gift I knew he'd like, and he won't drink it, and I want to know why. Those are two entirely different things. You, you, I, I hate Red Bull. Yeah. What? You're I thought you liked the yellow one. one. I hate the yellow one. one. That's the, the one I hate the most. No, it one. isn't. Yes, it you're is. You're the only one that likes Red Bull. Why did I think you liked yellow Red Bull? I don't know. Was the yellow you vitamin you water that you liked? Project things no. that you like. You're on lying. Other you're lying. I know you're lying. I know you're lying. You drink them all the time. <laughs> Lisa, you're lying. I pay attention. I'm a good gift giver. Sounds. It was my birthday, man. You gave me a Red Bull. We. That he hasn't drank for a whole year. Great gift. Moving on. Uh. <laughs> you believe this? He likes you do like yellow Red Bull, right? I do. Okay, good. Good. Happy birthday. Anyways, um okay. Never again. Was it July? <laughs> it's, it's now February. Um but yeah, so we ended up catching a few fish through the ice. Um mm-hmm. the a couple keepers um to be able to take home and fly up. Um Shout out to camping coach Dave for letting mm-hmm. us out on his lake and letting us park there and He's go a out. Sweetheart. If you are looking for a camping coach, RV, anything like that whatsoever, look up Camping Coach Dave on Facebook. Um, mm-hmm. He's constantly updating it. Again, Camping Coach Dave, check him out. What's a camping often? coach? Camping coach would be a, like I, a thing that you pull. Like an RV. Like yeah. the thing that you pull behind. Like the thing we stay in when we it's go to nice, Ryan's brother. It's a nice oh. thing to call a trailer. Uh, five wheel? Is that the yeah. term? Fifth Similar wheel. Fifth wheel. Yeah. Fifth yeah. wheel, the, the pull behind ones. Okay. RVs. They've got like sh- the yeah. ones that have like showers, no, showers in them and yeah. beds and yeah. Okay. So if you're looking for one of those, please check him out because he's a, honestly, they're like the nicest people on the planet. Yeah. Him and his wife. They're Quite go- possibly the nicest people we've ever met. Yes. Very nice. Um, and they go either way and they made it possible. So not only could I take Lily out there to get some fish, but we had some friends from Circle M Ranch in Oklahoma, mm-hmm. which is if you're looking to do any kind of rare, cool animals to hunt that you might not get to anywhere. But let's say Africa, then Circle M Ranch in Oklahoma is the place for you. Super nice people. It's starting to sound like most hunting shows. None of these are sponsors. We're just friends. Yeah, we're just <laughs> yeah. friends with all these people. Which is crazy. <laughs> I know we have a lot of friends, which is not even weirder. Because, yeah. like, why would you be friends with us? But yeah. Circle M Ranch is. how we act with our friends. Why would oh, you I want cl- a part I of that? The th- I, 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 cl- I accidentally clicked the t- I'm short. I'm, I'm short. Going <laughs> I, like, locked my leg. <laughs> I'm back. Okay. Like, that's your actual height. Normally, I'm sitting on something. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but, yeah, Circle M Ranch, uh, we got to do an odd ad hunt there, mm-hmm. uh, which was really, really cool because, you know, we're not in North Africa. So, getting to see those was pretty neat. Pretty tasty meat, too. Mm-hmm. The odd ad. Um, but nothing compared to the food. At Circle M. Oh, so good Lord. So here's the thing. Usually we get stuck in places where the food is cock awful. Just unless it's we came to visit it's you it's and you're <laughs> watching the podcast, then your food was great. I'm sure. Oh, I, I it is thanks so for like the flu and lobster Ray hoodie. <laughs> <laughs> wow. He knows. Yeah, so, he knows. I mean, it, knows. It's, it's some places you're just stuck eating prison food, or we make excessively long drives to go get food and mm-hmm. escape. Yep. To eat. Yeah. Which you, this it's place. crazy how much people have frowned upon. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry we went to get Mexican, okay? Yeah. You, the, Why don't you uh, go ahead and die? The bowl of gumbo <laughs> <laughs> The bowl of gumbo with the entire goose leg in it wasn't really wasn't really doing the it for me. Didn't even trim the, the, you didn't trim the goose nails, <laughs> my man. <laughs> I'm seeing the little scales on their legs. I don't <laughs> I don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. So anyhow, Circle M Ranch has like I don't even know. How do you explain this food? It'd be like a gourmet they restaurant. Had like yeah, lamb shanks food. with pesto on them. Ooh. They had the best bread. They cooked for they us. They had, oh my God. And every, it was the every best meal. food I've ever had. Every meal and every meal oh, was amazing. Phenomenal. True. Yeah. I know. I, so when they were here, I went to, uh, so Charles is the owner of it, Charles McGregor. Um, and uh, we're friends with his fr- uh, son, Brian, and everything like and that. And Connor. Yep. And Connor McGregor, yeah. <laughs> uh, and we went out and got some fish on the lake, but. 
after that, I was like, I feel obligated to take you guys to like the best restaurants in Fenton because <laughs> you you have to try. Like, I feel I, you You've obviously had a taste so for, well. Yeah. So we went to uh, Fenton Fire Hall. Shout out to Fenton Fire Hall and Kayla. Kayla works there. Uh, AJ's girlfriend. And uh, um, we got. Uh, um, I was like, you got to get the mac and cheese there. Oh, nice. Did so, they? Yeah, they got that, and they both got the half a chicken. They're like, right. oh, you got to get that. They love chicken. So, hmm. and I'm like, well, it's good. I got it last time. It's a big seller yeah. there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, uh, um, and then I took them to Fenton House. Uh, they like that the best out of everything. Actually, it's a local ordinance that every restaurant in our town has to have the name, <laughs> the word Fenton in it. I go, yeah. do you want to go to the Fenton <laughs> Hotel, kinda, the know. Fenton House, the Fenton Fire Hall? Or <laughs> and they started laughing. That's well, if you want not. something quick, there's a Fenton McDonald's down the street. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> something quick. It was rebranded. But yeah, the uh, um, so I took him to uh, Fenton House and we got the barbecue chicken and mm -hmm. uh, the breadsticks and the salad and all that stuff. But that was fantastic. But again, if you're looking for a cool place to go and some really nice people to do a uh, neat hunt with uh, and get an opportunity to do something awesome, then that's the place to go. They're in Oklahoma, Southwest Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, we're going there actually to do a buffalo hunt, which I'm super excited nice. about because of the meat. You know, I, it'll be cool to hunt buffalo and get to see them on the plains and stuff. And I want to do, um, obviously, we're friends with Chief Billy Friend of the Wyandotte Nation there. Uh, the governor of Oklahoma is pretty close with the Circle M people. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he's a uh, well-loved uh, uh, governor there in, uh, in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. It'll be exciting to go there and meet him. But kind of talk about, like, the culture in the episode. This is, like, my idea. If we did, like, something along the lines of the buffalo hunt, but, like, Buffalo are confined to these different spaces now, mm -hmm. but that's also kind of what happened to the Native Americans and kind of like tying that together, but also the nostalgia of like going out on a true buffalo hunt with Indians with us. That's an interesting perspective because both of which got confined to places where someone was like, that's where you're being put. And it, it, it's amazing to think about that the two of those are like partners. They the the combination of the two in history and the way they work together to survive is really fascinating. Yeah, you know it's it, they say that obviously um, those of you probably know because it's like sort of common knowledge. But the Tatanka, which is the buffalo or uh, bison, were obviously that's like how the Native Americans survived. They would follow the herds as they migrated and stuff like that, and that's what they lived off of. And they used every ounce of everything. And that's like a lesson that we still take into what we do with our show now is like using every ounce of the animal. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, they would even use like the stomach linings to gather water and mm -hmm. like just everything, they, the, the, the fur, the meat, everything. And when, I guess you'd say the white man, I guess he's like what you yeah. would say. It's like the colonizers. That, yeah. they. Yeah. Uh, um, one of the reasons why they killed so many was obviously for the, the tongue was like a delicacy. So they would take the tongue and the hides because they were very valuable, and then they leave the rest. And a lot of shame, right? And there's like uh, Dances with Wolves, a movie where you see all of them just laying there dead and you know wasted. The documentary. <laughs> <laughs> but in addition to that, they also um, part of the reason why they killed off so many was to weaken the Indians because that's what they lived off of. So oh. by getting rid of a lot of them, it was it was a strategy in that sense too. That's interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah. So it's sad to know that that's what happened. Such a great animal yeah. that got dwindled down to what it is, and again now they're kind of confined. But the the populations are coming back. I know that they're in South. There's a lot in South Dakota. My dad was t talking about. He's riding his Harley, and one was chasing them, kind of like running parallel to them for what, and he was doing it on purpose for whatever reason. And during their mating season. I guess you wouldn't say season, but the three days before they're going to um, have babies and the three days after, they're, the, the moms are super defensive. We learned that today at breakfast. Yeah. And then, uh, um, but a male was chasing my dad's Harley and he's like, I was going like 50 and that thing was like just barely not keeping up. Like right there. Whoa. Yeah. yeah. So they're, they're massive animals. Unless you've stood next to one, you don't realize how huge they are. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine? Which we got to in Texas. I say, yeah. And holy crap. Yeah. It's just massive. I know. Yeah. We uh we went to Ohio. They have a drive through safari there. Yeah. Where they have different animals, and you can drive through and feed, like, ostriches and giraffes, carrots. Yeah. And uh, this one couple in front of us is in this little two-door car, and they don't – clearly their first time there. They're just reaching out with their cup of whatever, and the animals are coming in. <laughs> this buffalo comes in, and they're like, oh, wow, look, the buffalo. You know, nothing bad has happened yet. And they reach out, and the buffalo takes the whole thing and – they're not being careful and starts to like go after the hand and they're like whoa 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 
And then they start bringing stuff back into the car. The buffalo goes, okay. <laughs> I'll come in there, Sticks too. Sticks his head in the passenger side window. <laughs> the passenger is in the driver's seat. The driver, seat si the driver is out their window <laughs> sitting on the side of the car trying to get away from the thing. And its entire head was in the car taking up the whole passenger space. Jeez. No chance I would ever bring my own vehicle to a place like that. No. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. You rent a car for that. There's Enterprise. There's slobber. Yeah. There's horns. <laughs> There's this idea oh. is brought to you by Enterprise Run a Car. <laughs> <laughs> Rent from us. <laughs> to get smashed by a buffalo. And progressive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for when for when the horns get horny. No. When, no. Nice. When, when you mess with the bull, uh, you get, get oh, the horns. Ryan, oh, Ryan. Thro throwback Thursday. Um, I think the most exciting thing about that, though, is the meat. I don't know. I just Because it's like <laughs> okay. something you used to say back in the day. Throwback. Shut up, Jeff. Make another uh, mousetrap. Okay. Um but the, <laughs> the ah, I don't think there's really a good defense anymore. I've <laughs> said enough dumb things since then. <laughs> um, I'm ex most excited about the meat though, because the amount good, of meat, good we'll, meat, the amount of meat we'll get off a of two buffalo. We Maybe gotta, that's how we can feed my wedding. We got to talk about. We could pull that off. Your wedding? Maybe. Is I don't know. Actually, I don't know if I would want to do that. Even why? Do, do they deserve it? Yeah. I like everyone there. The buffalo. But, yeah. Yeah. But do we want to feed everyone? Our oh, buffalo? the the people. <laughs> well, the buffalo don't deserve it. You understand? If we shoot two <laughs> buffalo, we can give one to that. Uh, I don't know if I want it though. I, I withdraw what I said. I think we should keep it to ourselves. But you guys know how I am with the meat. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. can share a little. He really is with, with friends and family, no. but not like you know, not a whole one. I don't even know what it would take. How many people are gonna be at your wedding? Probably around two hundred. That's a buffalo for sure. Mm. You get two hundred meals out of a buffalo, and it, and the venue might not even allow it. Yeah. Oh, really? Isn't it a barn? Dude, they got rules on everything. You guys are playing cornhole. Yep. I don't think there's that many rules. <laughs> well, it's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's actually in a pig pen <laughs> at the... Oh, so no. your family will feel right at home. <laughs> oh! oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, Sorry, no, it, greens. I know you're watching. <laughs> it is not in a pig it. pen. <laughs> My wedding is not in a pig pen. It's going to be at a nice facility nice. overlooking a lake. And there will be there's a fish in the lake. There, yeah, <laughs> so you're gonna be fishing we, there. Or, uh, it's where Roger goes golfing. Is there rules on that? Mystic. Yeah, Mystic. Majestic. Are you, are you able to fish? Are you Wal able to golf? Can we golf? And Wal what's the date? I get a year f free year membership. They just do everything there. Yeah, yeah. that's so, awesome. Do I want to get to golf or, or no. I don't know yet. I I haven't figured that out. I hope I get some sort of discount or that'd be cool. N I probably not. Roger Free. golfs there. It must be a nice place. Normally when you it's go... It's fantastic. Yeah, it's yeah. I golfed cool. there once, and it's... Yeah. I'm in. I'm in. What do I get out of yours? Um, Some nice food and responsibilities. What are my responsibilities as best man? You got to throw the party. Yeah. Seems like you should know that already. <laughs> if you, I know if you care, <laughs> Julia. you're not the best man. <laughs> <laughs> um... Yeah, it, like he comes, uh, he comes there, and there's mouse traps in everyone's seat because of this. Pocket. <laughs> like, I didn't forget. Do you guys yeah. feel like a fish? Hmm? You feel like a fish because you should. Joke's funny now, huh? <laughs> yeah. Um, the meat though will be the best part because I think we could eat off of. Well, if we get two buffalo, we have to share, Ryan. I'm not sharing. I, what freezer space do you plan on? Don't share. We'll have to I'm acquire deep. We'll have to acquire so many deep freezers to fit two yeah. two good two. sized deep freezers. Yeah. yeah, two. Just chock full. I'll eat it every day. The burger and the yeah. steaks and stuff. It'd be life changing I, I kill. Bet if we, if we were empty here at the freezer we have here between my freezer and the one here, we could fit one. So we would still need to find. Have you room seen for a buffalo? One. Yeah, but think about all the guts and yeah. the, how big the Any bones are. Any is not. You know, you you clean a deer and it's like that was a huge. How big is a full grown buffalo? That's I'm gonna look it up. Two thousand pounds. I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess three. Three grand. Here. I'm gonna guess eighteen hundred pounds. I'm gonna say twenty five oh one, Bob. Uh, what do you got, AJ? Uh, I don't remember. 1,800? 2,000? Jeff? 2,501. I said 2,000, right? <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's a, um, there can be a large range, but the average mature bull weighs about 2,000 pounds, and the average cow is 1,100. So if we shot two bulls, that's 2,000. You figure that's 1,000 pounds of meat. That would be like when we check lug it, because we always check them, the we, things. We ain't checking nothing. No, no, we're, no, we're driving we're that. Shipping, that would be – so how many carry-on things would that be? If it was 1,000 pounds of meat, that would be 20. 20 of them. No, that's not too deep for each At 100 bucks a piece. So. That's not too deep for well, each. We're going to drive – Every 50 pounds is $50, right? 
No, no, no. It's not about the money. I'm talking about the. Uh, I'm the trying to things. give you a perspective of like how much we filled up our freezers in the past. Right. With three or four of those coolers with 150 pounds of meat, mm -hmm. like the elk. We brought home 200 pounds of meat and we filled up some stuff with that. Yeah. So, because we gave a lot of that meat away. I mean, well, we kept 200 pounds. I'm saying. <laughs> we get it. You won't share. I'm, I, I'm trying it. to give you a perspective of like what a thousand pounds of meat is, and if we get two of them, that's two thousand pounds of meat. That's eight deep freezers. No way, dude. Yes. This is two deep freezers. Two good sized deep freezers. People buy a cow know. every every fall or whatever that people buy like a quarter cow or a half people cow. buy full cows and they alive can... they live in their house <laughs> my my yeah, my dad buys a quarter cow and that pretty much fills their freezer so that's how big is their freezer is it their fridge it's freezer it's like a full there's a chest freezer it's it's upright but it's uh you know you open it and it's got all the shelves and it's a uh, if full you freezer it's gotta be deep in order to be a calculation yeah, yeah that's yeah. fair that's fair your dad's freezer sucks <laughs> <laughs> it does <laughs> i was uh um i was wondering too like how different the diet would be on a like uh, like buffalo versus cow because the a lot of the cattle are like grain fed mm -hmm. so the meat in buffalo though is way leaner and did you know it's actually like if you were to compare buffalo meat to like chicken breast mm -hmm. the buffalo meat's technically healthier it's supposed to be like the healthiest meat on the planet is buffalo even even though it's a red meat over like chicken breast and turkey breast why and though like, that. like what uh fat content the amount of fat the leanness of it the vitamins in it that all of the above okay interesting and then the protein mm. versus fat and like calculations i mean people could argue like someone eating fish might be better for them for certain reasons but overall if you were to like compare it you could make a real strong case that buffalo is the best even over venison interesting yeah and it makes sense the, the vitamin thing because think about an animal that large that just grazes all day mm -hmm. that's bigger than a cow and they all they do is graze yeah and they, run. they've got to read and run they've got to learn to retain all those vitamins that they get out of the grass mm. that's yeah. fair i know when we're in hawaii the um the meat tasted the the cattle to me didn't taste as good like when we had uh like steaks and hamburgers mm -hmm. and stuff like that and they said that everything there is 100 percent grass-fed it's not grain finished so it's grass-fed there when we were there like basically every restaurant was grass-fed and i know with grass-fed there's like some benefits to it the omega-3 numbers are better in grass-fed than grain i know that the overall fat content is less but the good fat for you is more mm -hmm. um, well it's it's more but because they have less fat there's not that much fat in them so they're not going to have there is more omega-3 but not like enough to like oh for sure i'll eat that what does yeah, what does omega-3 do uh it's a fatty acid that's yeah. uh it's, it's good like for fish oil right yep yeah okay yeah. well that's why you take fish oil yeah, to get omega. Get it. it's yeah. good for your heart it's good for it's a it's a it's a good I fat i i buy that cla kind of, uh, is the other fight the conjugated the linoleic acid. Okay. Nice. Uh, well, tell us what that does, Jeffrey. I have no clue. Because <laughs> it's awesome. He has yeah, a diet. I'm really yeah. good with science words. That's that $100,000 degree is really mm -hmm. gone. Anyhow, um, and it was in this, which is crazy. Uh, mm -hmm. But the, uh, the CLA, I know that there's a lot more of that. It's also very good for you mm -hmm. in there. And then vitamin A and E. So I know that they're good for the brain and the eyes, I think. Mm -hmm. A and E. Yep. So Skin. Um, so those ones, you know, it's higher in the grass-fed too. Here's the thing, though. If you talk to any chef and you're like, hey, which one do you want to cook? Any reputable chef is going to say <laughs> uh, grain finished because of the fat content and the flavor. Mm -hmm. And I think there is a decent difference in the flavor between. They're easier to cook. They got more fat in them, so they're not as, like, tough. All that fat in there helps to, like, really, they're not as chewy. They're. But yeah, it tastes better obviously because there's more fat in there. The meat's more marbleized too. I guess it depends on the cut though. So health wise though, grass fed would be better. Yeah, Ryan, yeah. shut up. In in order, to make, <laughs> uh, I'm just in order to make them comparable, you have to cook grass fed with, like you know they do the the butter where they put it on there and then it it melts down and they take the spoon and yeah and put it back oh. on you know yep. that thing. Yep. They do that. What is that, that thing? I've that seen that makes it better because then the butter it's gets like in there, basting? the flavor, the fat, basting. but then. You're you're then getting rid of the benefits of the leaner steak. Right. So you know it, it's yeah. But if you're gonna swap these for butter, yeah. But if you're trying to get nutrition out of your food, yeah, you can still add the butter on top of that while retaining sure. that nutrition. Sure. 
it seems like I don't know. It depends yeah, there's on what, still a, there's it just still depends a on what you're there. Yeah. what you're going for exactly. I want a taste test too. Do any left and right? That'd be cool. Do All right, I'll bring a turkey. True I'll bring turkey comparison. noodle soup. You bring some steaks. We'll have. A we'll we'll do. We'll <laughs> see which one. I was gonna ask you. Do you know what happens? Because I was when I was kind of researching this stuff because I took an interest on it while on the toilet the other day. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so um, you do your best learning. Yeah, I know, right? And uh, uh, one of the things that I found is said that, and I had heard this before because Gina had said this before, and I remember her saying it that if you overcook beef, especially or anything where it turns black, like you char it. That that like creates carcinogens. Yeah. What yeah. Is, do you know what the, that is? The, anything that's charred has carcinogens because that once it is burnt, I, I don't know the exact science of it, but that black burnt is it's it, like burning your marshmallow. Yeah. It's just bad for you. They're not good. Yeah. But taste. If you think about burning something like that, that can't be good for you. you yeah. Know? So something with that, I knew made a big difference. Like mm-hmm. it became unhealthy if you had anything charred, and that's why. Honestly, too, with the the grills, we have a, a Traeger here at the office, and they uh, um, having it so the flame can't be directly on it. Yeah, and then you're still getting the smoky flavor and the the flame to actually cook. But well, that doesn't that kind of make you wonder, like, what the what, flare-ups. what what smoke burnt material is that carcinogen? It's also probably got some carcinogens in it, but so does everything. You know, anything you do a lot yeah, of is probably cancer. bad for you. You know. Trust isn't built in a day. It's built over time. The early hours and the late nights. It's built by doing the work and pushing the limits every day. Because the promises we make are the promises we were built to keep. If you'd like to help support the Greenway Outdoors, please like and comment on this podcast and subscribe to all of our channels. Do you remember when we were in Hawaii and we went out to dinner um, the last day? This mm-hmm. reminded me of that. And to dinner with that girl that you were friends with from high school. She's yep. from Fenton or whatever. Oh, yeah. Okay, so let me give you the scenario because this has been haunting me for years, and I may have even talked about this before on the podcast. I probably send one to two texts a month about this to you guys yeah, uh, when I think of different ago. scenarios. So here's the deal. We can't get enough of it. Definitely been exhausted. We're, <laughs> we're <laughs> all, all efforts. We were in Hawaii, and the very last day that we were there, we went to 808 to go to the beach, and we wanted to spend the whole day surfing and eating virgin – uh, virgin strawberry daiquiri ices and um, teach their own. Teach their own. Ryan was catching birds by hand. Actually, That's true. Did. he caught that pigeon. I forgot about that. I did not. It was on our TikTok. Got a lot of views. Thank you. Um, <laughs> he caught a bird with his bare hands. I bet him he couldn't do it. And he worked up I some. Chased that down. There's a few um, pigeons. Yeah, there was, was a few a women pigeon? there that pretty worked up over that he did it. But it was pretty. It was pretty, <laughs> yeah. it was pretty funny. Um, but yeah, he, um, while we were there. Um, we got all sandy and stuff, and then we had to go get on a plane. So Jeff and I broke into a hotel to jump you in there. You keep saying that. You all, it always gets worse every time you say it, too. We did not break in. <laughs> we it smashed a, the door down. No, no, we punched a, the lady at yeah, the front desk. Let's the true count. It was a beachside hotel, and we just walked in. <laughs> no, like, he makes it sound like we like, oh, there's a pool in there, but there's this window. You know what? I bet we could get through this glass if we just. <laughs> <laughs> We're nothing but our skibbies here, okay? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we, we had suits on. But we we used their pool as a uh, as we, a. As we didn't a, realize that we were. We just we felt gross. We didn't realize we were as sandy as we were. So we go and there's like oh this pool we'll just jump in. We'll at least feel like pool and not like ocean. It, you know, mm-hmm. to me that was a better feeling. Well, I, I want to get I, the salt I, off me. Yeah. And th- th- we need to put more emphasis on the fact that we are leaving the beach to go to the hotel. Or to, to, the, to, airport, to, the, airport. to the airport to fly home. Yeah, so there's no, the beach. There's like After no 12 other hours of swimming and <laughs> yeah. surfing. And uh, so we, we get in this pool and we're like, yeah, you know, not a big deal. A little bit of salt, but how much salt do you bring with you when you leave the ocean? And we, you know, we swim around for a minute and then we get out and look back and there's just sand. We both left a pile in the bottom so of the pool. So much sand in the pool and it's like, ah. But but what do we do at this point? I think we just leave. <laughs> yeah, it's like when you spill out a drink at a restaurant, you just run out. And where There's was nothing hiding? <laughs> yeah, uh, it was in crevices for sure. Oh. That was all crevice Eed. sand. Yeah, his had blood. <laughs> 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 so anyhow, after that, 
So we we go running back over to the car to change into clothes, but we have to change in in the parking lot. So There's some hooligans. <laughs> I know because we didn't have anywhere to go. Oh, yeah. So we're changing the parking lot, and up walks AJ and Ryan with a girl, and while <laughs> Jeffrey and I are changing, and I'm like, "What the hell?" Because I did not expect you guys to be walking up with a girl. Turns out AJ knows her. Yeah. How did you know her? She's a friend from high school. Yeah. God, and everywhere Maui. we go, we meet someone from Fenton. Yeah, that's what true. What in the world? Center of the, the world. Think about it. We have a lot of trips where we meet up with some of my friends. <laughs> TSA yeah. people at the airport are like, "Oh, Fenton, I'm from there." It's like we're in the <laughs> state of Washington. What? <laughs> To be fair, uh, outside of the people that are in some way associated with the Green Mountain Outdoors, you're pretty much the only one who has friends. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got, Isaac? It's a, it's awesome. He wears our hat all the time. He's basically part of the team. You guys just don't know about it. Yeah. It, no. We'd know. <laughs> We'd know if you had friends. We'll see you at the wedding when we're on the pig's platter. Uh, <laughs> 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 That's the the pig's platter is the thing that you if you go to that ice cream store out by Scott's cabin and you eat this giant stupid thing you get your picture on the wall and it's oh, called pig's the, platter called the pig's platter where it's like twenty different flavors of ice cream it's he's on it yeah yeah oh I bet he is yeah he that kid can yeah, eat he's a pig yeah he's nasty just ugly <laughs> no just kid Scott's like a, he's the nicest guy. Better, Scott's a very healthy male better shape than all of us <laughs> yes. yeah definitely he runs like six miles a day anyhow uh, but he can eat ice cream. Um, it's his thing. Um, anyhow, so we end up going out to eat with her after this because they, they had met up with her. So, okay, it's the four of us, and the, and we're about to get on a plane, two planes, and it's like 10 hours of flights yep. plus an hour and a half layover before we're going to get home, and they're all through the night. And we've been at the beach all day, and we are starving. So we order stupid amounts of foods and drinks and this and that. AJ doesn't even want to be able to walk to get on the plane. So, I mean, they're, you know, they're tossing them back, right? And, uh, and I've got two virgin strawberry daiquiris in me. I think maybe even a virgin <laughs> pina colada. Things are getting nuts. Mm -hmm. And uh, the bill is like hundreds of dollars, mainly because everything in Hawaii it's was- like 170, I believe. Yeah, yeah. 173. But the, the, uh, the, um, everything in Hawaii is just stupid expensive as it is. So yeah. uh, we get a bunch of food. Remember like breakfast was like $25 per person? It wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. It was 10 times worse than I thought it'd be. Well, it's a small we place. couldn't afford anything. anything. It's a small place and anything they don't have, they have to fly from right. six hours away. That's you why know. you get spam in every meal. Yeah. It's true. It was great, actually. Used to be. Loved it. I didn't realize I liked spam as much as It's I did. basically just bologna fried. That's what I felt it's like. It's good. It's good. I it's really it was good. Right. Yeah. I was against it, too, until I had it. I did find the rice at every meal yeah, or rice breakfast really interesting. Good. Yeah. It's it's like like I liked the rice. Sushi too. rice? I don't know. Like, uh, like they put like vinegar and a. Yeah. Um, little tangy sesame seed thing on it. It's pretty good. Yeah. <clears throat> so we ordered all this food, and she's like, the the bill comes, and I don't know how she even got it. She grabs the bill and pays for all of us. Why? Mm -hmm. There's four of us, one of her. She got the smallest meal I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. A drink, we maybe. Sp we spent all the money. Yep. She spent, like, nothing. And none of us know her. Hardly mm -hmm. even Adrian. <laughs> none of us. Not one. <laughs> she grabs the bill and pays for it. I, that has bothered me. What year was this? 2019? Yeah. 2019. Yeah. Right before the pandemic. Yep. Yeah. November. And uh, um, it, 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 is, it has haunted me. Why would she do it? <laughs> Why would she pay for it? It, it doesn't make customs. Uh, and she's female. And we're guys. And I know you're not supposed to say that anymore because women's power and all that stuff. But a, a little traditional value around here. Can I? <laughs> I mean, come on. So she pays for the whole thing. And I, to this day, have no idea why. Bothers the heck out of me. Do I, like, do you have a hunch? I don't have a hunch. What's I crazy is after that dinner, after we stepped farther than a five-foot radius from that table two years ago, I never would have thought about it again. <laughs> 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 Though, I mean, the, th the thing that's weird about it is, like, you know, if you go out with one friend and like oh the one pen one friend pays for the meal like mm -hmm. oh that's really nice thank you yep. i'm i'm sure i'll get you next time number 1 we may never see her again and number 2 there were four of us and we went ham that day yep we i don't know that she knows my name and she paid for my meal <laughs> yeah. then maybe not i it's wild yeah anyhow she runs a fishing charter now so we're going to go back and use her for a boat but that's besides no i'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I cannot. Very generous. Do you think she would ever uh, video chat in and we could ask her why she did that? Yeah, probably. I would I would make a good estimation. How now. dare you? This has haunted me for years. <laughs> it better not be a simple answer. She, she's be... mad at you because she was expecting you to pay her back. 
Yeah. yeah. Like, well, she's <laughs> For like, all these years, she was just pissed. <laughs> it turns out, like, we didn't know it, but we were all like, she thought, she all right. thought, she thought we paid. <laughs> we thought oh, we all ran paid. out. She's in jail. Like, they caught her. <laughs> like, she. I don't think you We just left from the parking lot and separated. <laughs> <laughs> no, she she knows what she did. I want to know she why. She was in a hurry when we left. I, mean. <laughs> I, I, and I, it better not be something like, oh, I just felt like it. Pay it forward. It, it no, could be. It I want, well I want be. a real answer. I want, I want. I wouldn't expect much out of she this. She was buddy. hoping she was going to get AJ out of the deal. She's I want gonna, to hear, I want to be surprised by your enthusiasm. Like, wait, you're still thinking about this? How could I not? She's going to. Four of us. No, no, she's going to go, did I? Yeah, oh, that was huh. nothing. That would wreck oh, me. That's pocket change. <laughs> yeah, I'm not pocket s- change. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, that I, dog food meal. What are you talking about? <laughs> that would that would bother me greatly. Yeah, I just such an expensive bill. In the off chance that it could bother you more, I hope that this circumstance never happens because I'm already tired of it. Right, and it only comes up once a month. Shouldn't have come up ever. <laughs> so, <laughs> once it's a kinda, month. It's kind of funny. The the last text that I sent the group was uh, so. Jeffrey had handed me like two hundred dollars oh, right oh. before that. No, nope. in cash. Incorrect. How much was it? It was five hundred dollars. <laughs> oh god! What? Yeah. I thought it was two. I've nope. been working myself down. I think on it. Yep. He, Jeffrey handed yeah, me. Yeah, you do that. Five. I was like, we're gonna need. <laughs> yeah, you do that. We're gonna need emergency cash, and like maybe some places just don't take card. We don't know. We've never been to Hawaii before, so just to play safe, I bring five hundred bucks in an envelope. You just uh, you just in case. He brought traveler's checks. <laughs> that was a thing. Would have been a- better. Maybe we could have canceled those. <laughs> it probably would have been better. Yeah. He handed that to me, and seven minutes later, we had gone into two different restaurants looking for to get a table, but everything was booked out. And somewhere in there, I'd like to think I got pickpocketed, but I lost the five hundred dollars in there. If uh, you could have been pickpocketed, she said oh, that was a thing. One hundred percent, you could have, but. I don't have a greatest reputation. But if we look at this person's track history. Oh, yeah. <laughs> who? who the, 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 the guy the, that stole no, it? No, no, no. no. <laughs> we're, yeah, we're, we're just speaking in hypothetical here. If we, you look at a person's track history you and you call. understand they tend to be not good at securing any physical item, yeah. you'd understand why this $500 was gone. Yeah. So someone pickpocketed me. <laughs> And I the think person, it's this chick. <laughs> she took the money. That's how she. That, that was my most recent text. I go, "What if she's the one that stole the money, and then felt bad? So then she bought our food, or maybe it was an elaborate way. She stole the money just to buy the food because she knew enough about me that it would upset me. Maybe that's the whole thing. Either way, whoever <laughs> is responsible for us not having that money is a scumbag. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I agreed. That pick. <laughs> well, I mean, okay. So to switch sides, you could argue. That all of us knowing this person as well as we do, whoever gave them the money. Yeah, that's yeah. fair. I don't know that, that I yeah. specifically gave him the money. Two in a year. <laughs> I think we just had it in the van. We were driving a van. No, no, you gave it to him. I remember. We, had we a were van. driving a van. Yeah, we, we had, had a, a, van. A, a Dodge Caravan. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> we looked through that van. <laughs> Your face. Yes, sir. We did Dodge <laughs> Caravan. <laughs> de- de- definitely, definitely Dodge Caravan. <laughs> Oh, the 500 bucks is gone, and uh, the food was good, um, but she shouldn't have paid for it. I want to know why. When I would feel, I can't tell you how excited I would be if she was like, here's the truth. I took $500 off of you, and I gave you $200 back. No, no. And I would, I would respect better. her more for it. I would. She goes, you know what? Honestly, I was just walking down the street the day before, and I found an envelope with $500 in it. So I just thought, you know, I'll treat my friend. I feel like, you know, I, I'm never going to find the person who lost this money. So I'll at least, you know, give some of it away. So I feel it better forward. about it. Pay it forward and then keep the rest for myself. You know, that'd that be could amazing. be. Please let that be the thing. Actually, that'd be great because then we paid for it and you can, for but, the love of God, stop talking about it. No, <laughs> I, I hope it's something better. I hope it's a good story. We should get her on FaceTime. Or, we'll uh, have to arrange that. Yeah. Zoom. We'll, next week uh, would be great. Okay. So, <laughs> speaking of losing $500, there's now another way to lose $500 in Hawaii on your first offense. They've r- recently banned shark fishing or slaughtering or anything of any kind in Hawaii yeah. if you're within the state's like jurisdiction. I waterway just, jurisdiction. Hawaii. 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 I want you to know 
that you don't normally do most of the like transitions in between things. And it was a very good attempt. That's the best segue we've ever had on this show. Thank you. That was a good one. Yeah. Very solid. Now you broke the momentum. Yeah. So yeah. Way to so, go, you mutt. <laughs> go ahead. Sh- shark fin soup. Go ahead. Okay. So <laughs> I'd eat it. So all of that is now elite. It's the first state in the United States to make it illegal. And it sounds like a lot of other, st- not a lot of other states, like Oklahoma is not going to follow suit because you know why. But some, <laughs> some, of, the, some of the coastal states. Someone st- hasn't watched River Monsters. <laughs> <laughs> some of the coastal heard states. Of a land shark? <laughs> <laughs> some of the coastal states are considering this. And they're working on trying to pass a bill federally th- that makes it illegal. And so. Wait, so shark fishing in general or f- shark keeping? Shark anything. It sounds like if you're messing with a shark and it's not an accident. You're screwed. Hmm. Okay. I so, was going to say, you'd be in trouble for that, but if we caught it on accident. Huh? He was having a snack accident. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, it's Jeff's going off. We caught Go a ahead. cool fish, and, and we put it on a stringer. And I a caught shark. a snook my first cast when we went on spring break senior year because we stayed at a house on the Halifax River, which is the brackish water that separates Daytona Beach from mm-hmm. the mainland, and I caught a snook on my first cast put it on a stringer because it was in the slot <laughs> and then Jeffrey and everyone came out 10 minutes. Well, Jeffrey was with me. Joe Gerdesich came out. You know, Joe, uh, he got that fish. Yeah. His parents watched the podcast, by the way. Uh, he Joe, group, he group shoots. Yeah. Uh, he <laughs> <laughs> so Joe, <laughs> it's funnier because it's AJ too, yeah. but he comes out he goes, Hey man, your fish is effed up. I go, what do you mean? And I look over, and there's a, a shark, shark ate it. W- was in the midst of eating it. Mm-hmm. Then they tried to lift the stringer out and uh, grab the shark, but the shark got off. Mm. Yeah. So, so they were trying to catch the shark? No, it was just my <laughs> stringer. Well, they uh, tried to catch it because it was eating my fish yeah. we on the stringer. I was excited to see what it was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so saw manatee, so anyways, too. Anyways, anyways. Shark fin soup. So Hawaii, now making Hawaii. Me- Hawaii. <laughs> Aloha. <laughs> so... Hawaii is making this illegal. Well, it is illegal now. Your first offense is fi- a five hundred dollar fine. Ouch. Your second one, two grand. Whew. Your third one is ten grand. Jeez. An is exile there any, from any the j- island. What well, depends how good is shark meat? It's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Have you had shark? Mm-hmm. It, is good. it is good. They've had VGs. I've had it. What? I've I've caught one and had it. Nice. Really? Yeah. Without is it? it? Is Wait. It? I I should I should. In Hawaii. In Hawaii. <laughs> uh, Yesterday. <laughs> no, we, I, I was younger when it happened. We were fishing somewhere, and doesn't the meat have like a something in it where you have to like dr- like get like let it sit or drain it or something like that? I don't know. We cut it in, up into cubes and yeah, it reminded and fried me of tuna. It. And hmm. I, I had it fried. Yeah, it was good. Okay, so I can understand why people like it. The issue is that a lot of people with it, like people say shark fin soup, and the issue is they'll catch the shark, cut all the fins off, and throw the living shark back in oh. and, and don't utilize any of the other meat. So the thing, if you ever look up videos, it's sad, man. Yeah. And they're just, like, sitting there floating around half alive. It, it's sad. So I can kind of get where this is coming from, and they do do – It's the same thing with chicken wings. They, <laughs> <laughs> they, they do do or a lot buffalo of, wings. <laughs> <laughs> oh. have, you, have you ever seen a buffalo with wings? Exactly. They cut them all off. <laughs> Anyways, that's so. Hard. I I don't know. I, I have a tough time with the whole banning a well, sp- I, specific species because we've seen how that works. You be you create a black market for things now, and you see that in other parts of the world where it is illegal. I think it has like healing properties, or it's an aphrodisiac or something. Yeah, and you, by doing this, you're creating a black market. Well, you shouldn't break the law, mm-hmm. but if you're gonna find people for this. How about you limit the amount of tags going out? Just like anything, we've discussed this before, where make a lottery and then make people pay an astronomical amount to be a part of this lottery. There you go. What is the um, what is the situation as far as, like, why why are they doing this? Is the numbers low? Are there so, too many being killed? Yep. So they, I think the, they, they think, what was it? Let's see if it's in this piece of paper. Because that's normally where I had is like, mm-hmm. is it uh, like, is there a reason why you're trying to conserve these? Because, I mean, if they ban they banned bear hunting in uh, New Jersey, and that was stupid. Mm-hmm. Like there was too many bears. They banned cougar hunting in California. Very dumb. They banned muskrat trapping California. 
Now they very just dumb. Have to pay people to go out and do those exactly. things. Exactly. So whenever I hear something being banned, like my first thought is like, okay, Not the shark fin soup. Okay, don't do that. I also wouldn't shoot a deer and just take the back straps and leave it either. You know, mm-hmm. that, so I I tend to play devil's advocate anytime I hear something like that. Right. So, and that's why I was asking if you knew. So I, I think this is around the world. 100 million sharks are killed annually due to human activity. Oh, wow. So. Lot. But, it, I mean, you have to read it carefully due to human activity. Is that a shark being hit by a boat? Is that yeah. – that, that could be a, a few it's different things. I bet, I bet a lot be of like it is bycatch. Pollution? So that's that the other issue. I think the th- other thing I read was 350 million pounds of shark go to waste as bycatch. Jeez. That's insane. Which is a number. lot. So, that, so I think they're trying to put an emphasis on if you catch a shark, get rid of it as fast as possible. Throw it back in the water. Get rid of it keep them safe because they do have a strong purpose within the ecosystem however you're creating a black market now and in a place where i mean ocean life is a big thing Mm -hmm. says there's gonna be a lot of incidents all the major fishing countries use destructive fishing practices that result in the killing of up to 100 million sharks every year and are in large part responsible for the 70 percent decline in shark populations globally over the past 50 years the thing is though that's from Friggin greenspace.org, you know, like these aren't these aren't who knows you, you're right getting very biased sources on right. this stuff And that's why I'd like to know more about it because you know, that's the catchphrase Everyone's going with this is this hundred million sharks are well, killed and, every and year The thing you just read said that it's a hundred million due to basically bycatch where the thing he read said It's due to human activity, which again could be who knows what it says 70 percent is 70 percent of the declining numbers over the last 50 years is due to the okay. fishing practices which would lead you to believe like the bycatch or that sort of thing yeah. but like the other thing is like for instance when people are like oh how could you ever elephant hunt there's not enough elephants or there's not enough giraffes or there's not enough this it's like well that might be in a super focused area mm-hmm. like for instance in some places elephants are overpopulated they're trampling people's they're wiping out crops and farms and stuff overnight there's too many of them in that area so it's like Okay, so, you know, these global practices, I just think people get really excited anytime they're like, hear a campaign of something like, oh, we're going to stop killing this thing. And everyone's like, yeah, good, don't kill that thing. But, you know, this seems like that case where it's like a very emotional decision. Right. That they've turned and used some fact to fit their narrative, which Mm -hmm. happens a lot. And uh, there are exceptions to the rule. So the exceptions would be. Um, the law does not apply to people with special activity permits issued by the DNR. So it sounds like in some instances you're going to be able to get a permit to do this. Mm -hmm. Um, Shark fishing for public safety purposes as authorized or conducted by the DNR. So if they let you do it. Um, Sharks taken outside of state marine waters with required documentation i don't know what the documentation needs to be but it sounds like maybe if you travel far enough out into international waters you can that's what it sounds like you can catch them but then the issue don't becomes bring it back yeah you that's exactly right. that's what the, is Eat that it while you're out there <laughs> so that's the issue i see you running into it's like it kind of sounds like a trap not i don't think this was built to be a trap that right. that rule but it sounds like if you came back into port Checking and coolers and they'd say check the coolers they're like what are you doing dude international waters got an international waters it, yeah and that might know. be where the documentation comes into play maybe they need gps <laughs> records of where you've been mm-hmm. out in the water Could be. um sharks captured and tangled or killed for self-defense or in the defense of another so like bear hunting you if so, a bear is messing you up you can shoot it and kill it. Yeah. Sounds like the same scenario. I don't know that you would win a battle with a shark that wants to kill you. Yeah. Um, so a lot, a lot of places. When you, if you shoot a bear in self-defense, you're still going to jail for like a week while they figure out what happened. A strong investigation. Like a whole, yeah. It's like a whole big. Thing. Yeah. I would assume it's probably similar for a shark if they're gonna, you know, clamp down like this. So the other instance is sharks captured or killed according to a permit issued by the DNR. So, I mean. It's a very small and specific um, amount of access to shark yeah. fishing. So this is what I'm reading on it, too, from National Geographic in 2013. 
One of the most comprehensive studies ever compiled on illegal shark killing brings new uh, startling statistics. So an estimated 100 million sharks are killed every year. So this is the study where it came from. <laughs> the statistical report compiled by researchers at Dal Dalhousie University in, Dalhousie. Halif Dalhousie in oh. Halifax, Canada, crunched numbers of reported shark catches globally and used the data from nearly 100 former papers to estimate the number of unreported shark deaths every year. In a moving range, the researchers were able to calculate that between 6.4 and 7.9% of all shark species are killed annually. Now, oh. to put that range into perspective, they say that they, they have found that 4.9% of sharks can be killed each year to maintain the population stability. So by going over it 1 to 3%, mm -hmm. you're going to be going down 1 to 3% over the course of that time. Mm -hmm. Now, that may not sound like a lot, but when then when you think about it and say, okay, the average between one and three would be two. So if it's two per year, and this report was from nine years ago, that's 18% of all sharks are now gone. Um, so that that's a, the university that did a study, and obviously if that is the case, then the science, you know, you should be careful of that. Granted, it's kind of like uh, duck hunting, where we want more duck hunters out there to up the numbers to help with the license sales and stuff like that, but you don't want them around you. Yeah, right. That's true. It's yeah. kind of like that with Once sharks, where it's like, yeah, protect yeah. the sharks, but if I'm swimming, you know, go ahead and die. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I had kind of started going there earlier that other states are going to follow suit and do the same thing. And they're trying to pass a law federally that you can't do this anywhere in the U.S. Hmm. And it sounds like if if it passes, the the fine you can receive from the federal government is up to $100,000. So... And the thing that sucks That's about that is like, maybe in ain't nobody you know, we meant there have a hundred thousand dollars except one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe in Maine there's like a big shark problem and they have to do something about That's it. That's what I'm saying. So they have hunters do it, but you know it's it's a shame that now the federal government feels like they need to step in and make something that might not be good for everyone or potentially even good for the sharks. It's like the the cultures up in uh, um like in the middle of nowhere and the art. I don't. Like way up north, whether it be Canada, Alaska, whatever, I know there's sp um, specific tribes and people that are able to take X amount of whales per year. Yeah. And they all eat it. That's like what they eat and harvest mm -hmm. and use. And, uh, um, you know, Jim Shockey did a couple episodes on it on his uh, on his Uncharted show that were just spectacular. I think they're on YouTube. You can even check them out. But where he went whale hunting and I was like, I got to see this because mm -hmm. what 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 are you doing, man? Mm -hmm. And um the way it was explained is like they take X amount a year. The way they hunt them was crazy. Like the whales would, they would go out on the glacier and they would sit there all day, like out on the ice shelves, like right by the water. And they would wait until they swam by. And when they did, they would shoot them and then they'd have to haul out in their boats and then hook them and then br bring them up. And then they'd all have to work to get them on shore. And thousands and thousands of pounds, giant things. Then they break them down and they used every ounce of those whales mm -hmm. and they were able to kill X amount a year. And then they take it back to the people. And that's what the people ate there. Yeah, you know that's like what they ate. That's what they consumed. So they're allowed to kill like each. Tri this tribe was allowed to kill like twenty eight a year or something like that, and that's what they did. And it doesn't harm the population, but like that's what they've eaten for hundreds of years. How are you going to tell them they can't mm -hmm. do that? Um, so that's it's just kind of an interesting thing. It's like well there, but of course we wouldn't want everyone out whaling either. So it's like yeah, you know it's kind of one of those things. And the other the other thing is this is why I'm such a proponent for fish farming. You know, and we did that study where we were talking about the, the, the health benefits of farm-raised salmon versus, um, um, and, and when people think farm-raised, they think versus wild-caught is what I was gonna say to finish that sentence. But what people think of when they think of these fish in these fish farms is they think of these gross ponds where they raise these carp and it's disgusting and soy pellets and halibut and all that stuff. But when they do that, there's fish farms that they actually have like in the ocean where it's like these giant cages that are in the ocean that the fish are in that eat natural things that are in natural water that has constant water flow going in it and they feed them the necessary things for the diet and everything like that. So, but without fish farming, you know, we could be in big trouble. And that's why, you know, if we, I think it's something like we'd fish out the oceans inside of five years or something if we didn't have fish farms with the amount of fish that is consumed. And this is our planet, so we have to take care of it. But at the same time, like Jeff said, there's a lot of these instances where it's like, well, be careful in this area, you might need to, mm -hmm. you know, I know there's cer certain places where there's a ton of shark sightings, mm -hmm. you know, where people have issues and the numbers are really high there. So 
you know, but how do you get the whole globe involved too? It's like, you know, different people, with different cultures and that shark fin soup was going for reported well over a hundred hours a cup Jeez. for shark I mean, fin soup. The thing is, it's like, you sort of makes you curious. You can yeah. never fix a problem with a, like a broad solution that doesn't yeah. take each different place. Maybe instead, instead of saying like, if you fish for a shark, it's a hundred thousand dollars. You say every state that has a shark population or is adjacent to a shark population, whatever, makes a decision have, because has to have evidence of some type of conservation program. I will say this, you know, in my opinion, I think we have collectively the world has a lack of respect for the ocean. Oh, but for sure. we also have a lack of knowledge of the ocean. It's not like, I mean, we know b more about the surface of the moon than we do mm -hmm. our own ocean. So there's that. But I think that's deep. Yeah. Just like the ocean. Uh -huh. Yeah. Get it? But I Thanks th for tuning in. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> It does need to. I think it needs to be a state issue. It has to go state by state, yep. just like every other animal. Mm -hmm. And then help educate people and help them learn. And if you really want to buckle down on people, buckle down. Give them the $10,000 fine. Lock them yep. up in jail. If, don't mess up. Usually that's that, the rule. That helps. Yeah. I, I wonder what it'll do to um, fishing practices, though. You know, I wonder if it hasn't been adopted everywhere else because, like, if they're all being killed by fishing practices, well, what are those practices? That, that, you know, the giant nets and the things like that. Well, what will that do as far as, like, them being able to effectively fish? It sounds yeah. like they call the babies pups. No, I didn't know that. Yeah, so really? they're like they, – they say don't go to pupping grounds mm -hmm. where the, the – they, they Yeah, <laughs> where they tend to – grow and be babies and I know blah, 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 whatever and they also are recommending to use barbless hooks okay so yeah i mean you can see where that might become an issue for some people <laughs> well that that's uh, you're talking me and you going fishing though i'm talking like the commercial fishermen right uh, for commercially they're saying stay out of those areas they're, they're, yeah but that won't solve it you know, that I, if that's where the young are growing it won't completely solve it is what i'm saying no and if what it, you're gonna solve the problem in hawaii this, yeah. this is a worldwide issue we're talking about. And any of the stats they give you, they're giving you worldwide stats. They're right. not giving you I trust I trust all stats, especially on COVID-19. <laughs> especially. Oh, great. Especially. Uh, last story we wanted to cover real quick. Um, Jeff raises a bunch of animals. Mm -hmm. um, I'm building an ark. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> um, so what, what birds do you have right now? Um, I have uh, five pigeons. I've got eight chickens a turkey and two chucker and a partridge in a pear tree two partridges the, the chuckers. chuckers i just <laughs> said that <laughs> I, I just i just said, just that. said it <laughs> um now we had a little bet going your turkey quit laying eggs correct mm -hmm. okay so worth and she eats more food than the chickens and she also you're supposed to give them a higher protein diet so i give her special food just for her but she's insisted on eating more of the chicken food recently and it doesn't agree with her stomach so she's also pooping more which is annoying yeah, do you ever name her no she's livestock see i'd have at trouble at some with that. point you're dude gonna yeah we know i know you'd make friends with you don't a worm on the ground if you could. <laughs> <laughs> no, at, at some point i'm gonna get rid of her and replace her with you know next year's how old is she you know, uh she no broad right mid mid 2020 so a little more than yeah coming up on two years now, we were talking about, obviously, we brought up the soup eight times. Mm -hmm. So, Ryan and I, while we were sitting there talking about it, you said you were going to kill it yep. and then bring it in to eat. Mm -hmm. And Ryan freaked out. Yeah. No. I don't understand why. You, so, what are your thoughts on how this is going to turn out? Okay. So, it's going to be kind of a middle ground between a, like a good uh, farm-raised turkey and like a wild turkey. Because wild turkey you shoot could be- Mine was three and a half. Three, four years old, you know? This turkey is only a year and a half or something like that, and she's had plenty of room to run around, and I know what she's eaten. She's eaten- <laughs> Chicken feed. <laughs> mostly, for most of her life, she's eaten a good balance of some chicken feed, but a lot of turkey feed, which is specifically geared towards what turkeys need, the correct amount of protein, the proper variation, you know, and then she free ranges some, gets some grass, bugs, um, Pigeon, pigeon turkey food. smokes grass. I'm sure. I'm sure she eats pigeon food when she can get into it. Um, On Thursdays, right? Oh but yeah. yeah. So she. So I. I know what it eats. I'm. I'm almost more confident eating this turkey than I would be in a wild turkey, where you don't necessarily know 
you know, what it can get into. Ryan, so here's the deal. Uh, That's you're in stupid. Fu- you're, you're in full Cy si- Spangler mode right now. Yeah. Here's the deal. So no here's one the knows deal. who that is. Cy <laughs> si- si does. Uh, one person. <laughs> we used to have chickens. We knew exactly what we were feeding them. They had plenty of room to run around. And I think it was like a little less than a year. We slaughtered them and we're like, hey, we'll try eating them. Dude, god awful. It was disgusting. Like every other kind of meat, it entirely depends on how you cook it. Because That's been I've Jeff's had, mantra. No, I've had no, no, no. Three year old chicken I, I've eaten. I would and it agree has been with you. I, I would agree with you in this case, but these he's chickens. Also the, he's a garbage disposal of a yeah, human. Yeah. I mean, look we'll, at we'll see. Well, I, honestly, <laughs> it's a roux. Go ahead. <laughs> it's a sauce. Mr. Cooking Segment It's a sauce. Guy. It's a sauce. Nope. So anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> is it? It is a sauce. No, it's not. Damn. What is it's it? It's a base for making things. That's, that's a sauce. It's the middle guy. It's yeah. like it could be the beginning of a sauce. Yeah. Maybe. Anyway. Mine is. <laughs> My roux is. So anyhow, I don't even remember where we were. Oh, I was going to say, I would be... Pleasantly surprised if this turkey comes out good. In my opinion, I do not think it is because of I've seen how it was raised. I don't think it was raised poorly. This is his G-rated version of it. He was calling you all kinds of stupid names earlier. Said you. I've seen how it was raised. What? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I don't know. I I'm excited to try it and excited to see how it is. And you have to. How are you going to prepare it? That's the other thing because sous vide. Which is fancy trust French the pr- for trust the process. I, I put don't it, want put it to in eat. A bag. I okay, that worries Vacuum me. Vacuum seal it, and then you cook it low and slow for like eight hours at like 135, probably more than that. 100, maybe 140 degrees. Maybe 160. No. I don't want to eat your. You don't have to. I understand that. <laughs> Basically, what I'm doing is, is I'm doing the low version of almost like pasteurization, where you're cooking it out. You can either do a high temperature for not as long. Or you can do a low temperature for longer. Listen. It makes it more tender. It's more juicy. I've never had bad meat from sous vide. So your old ass turkey mm-hmm. that you're going to. funny because it's, it's. That you're going to cook in your. I've had, but it's in no that, way old. It's a year and a half but old. But speaking of. That you're going to cook. As far as turkeys go that you eat, this is an old as shit turkey. The turkeys you buy from the store are like three months old and packed. And your plan is to put it in a hot tub. Mm-hmm. So that it can be pink when you serve it to us. That That's your goal. In, in a, in that it's his goal. In, it's his goal. In a plastic pink. bag. In a, it's going to be like Preston from Jackass. <laughs> nice. That's you. <laughs> that's, that's not how it better not be pink. Works. It's not pink. Okay. I'm, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt, and I, I will say that if, if you can find a way to tenderize it, it's going to be good. It's just like when you go to a restaurant and you ask for medium rare mm-hmm. sometimes you're going to get rare sometimes you're going because it's based on feel it's based on whatever this is based on a specific number for a specific amount of time and it comes out exactly the way you want every single time okay. specific <laughs> specific now you, Bolt probably, my back. you probably won't like the uh, the idea that i do cook it in a cooler you know, <laughs> you know I don't. what just get it done that's how sous vide works how are you it's cooking a, it's in a cooler? A, it's not, you're not using a stove, you're not using an oven, you're not using a grill, you're using this. It's like a wand, and the wand circulates the water and heats it up to whatever temperature you want. You could technically sous vide in like a this bathtub. Man, this man's cooking. Uh, it doesn't matter yes. what you're cooking it in because you're the cooking you it in a vacuum sealed yeah, bag. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Just this get it done. This is how sous vide works. He is right. Why, can't we, just, very fancy. why can't we just bake a turkey? Because it will suck. Because then it will suck. Yeah. Because it's and an you older know it. turkey. And, and listen. Oh, oh! What? Because it's an older turkey. It won't taste good if we do it like normal. See, this was the no, Ryan from earlier. It, I was very surprised he was nice until now. It's nothing to do with taste. It's about the texture. A turkey that's older, that's had Dude, more time you're not telling me around. it's because of the texture. You eat things for the taste. Yeah. It'll I, taste I, fine. I'm a texture guy. However, if you if you allow like the fun it, especially, dip especially my turkeys had a lot of time to free range and walk around a lot, get a lot of exercise, the, the muscles over time, just like an older deer. Older deer can be, like, tougher. <laughs> <laughs> nope, no, I, like, I, I won't help. I We're going to find no, out. I don't, I don't We're going to so. find out. So, so anything that I'm not 100% sure on texture, I will sous vide. Experiment with. Uh, because sous vide, you know you're going to get good texture. And it's it's turkey meat. So, so what are you, you what are you gonna do with it after okay, you sous vide? So we have to put an over under on this. What's the recipe? So you sous vide it to get it to be how you want it. Then you cut it up 
and then you make the soup separate, and then you just add the turkey in. Okay. Yeah. All right. Hopefully that broth does the trick. Yeah. Uh, what's the over under? Good or bad? Kyle. Well, it's in the soup, so we I mean, still don't really know what uh, exactly how over under works. Uh, wait, is, it gonna be, is it going to be is, good or bad? Good. We've talked about the, it. It's going to be good. So I'll over, go last. Under. All right. I think it it's going to be good, but on the very low end of good. Yeah, I think so. I hope AJ? I'm proven wrong. AJ, I agree with same Ryan. thing. Yeah, okay. I'm worried where about are you? this technique. Do you, I think it's going to be great. On, honestly, do you think it's going to be great? Yeah. Okay, where are you? I think if I got I'll it at a restaurant, I'd be worried, but because you cooked it, I'll eat it. There you go. Okay. That's the what I turkey got. that I cooked for Thanksgiving last year was a little more than a year old, and it was fine. It was delicious. Yeah, for your family. On that note, Tasty. thank you. Guys. <laughs> make sure to tune in for next I week because we got a lot yeah, going. I do a taste it test. With garlic butter and Cajun butter, and it was delicious. Next week on the Green Outdoors podcast, episode eighty-one, we will be hopefully talking to your friend from Hawaii who yeah. will video Hawaii. chat. In. Hawaii, Hawaii, Hawaii. Uh, she will be video chatting in, so I can ask her the question that's been upsetting me for two years. We'll try Jeff's Freak Soup and uh, his hot tub soup. <laughs> and uh, uh, we'll also cover some cool current events that are going on in the outdoors. And uh, I don't know, we might even circle back to the shark fin soup if we're hungry. So, there you go. No, I'm just kidding. We'll see. Um, it's not you, illegal here yet. If you're listening to this. <laughs> <laughs> Great Lake Shark. <laughs> if you are, uh, that, a, that was an old, old myth, but uh, people actually thought that was a bull shark could have. Anyhow. Um, I saw it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I saw it. This is a fact. Um, check out the Green Bay Outdoors podcast on, like I said, if you're listening to this and you can't see it, then check it out on YouTube or Carbon TV and you could see the version because I think for the soup in this video chat, that might be uh, a better way to go. Also, check us out on Facebook, Instagram. Check out our newest episode, Sockeye Salmon in Alaska, on our YouTube channel as well. That's our true TV show, the Green Bay Outdoors, because we're not just a podcast. Check it out there. Thanks so much for tuning in and stay green.